Hey guys, I'm here with a review for Pitch Black. Um, might be the coolest movie cover I own. That artwork is looking seriously cool. Um, there were two versions of this. I chose to watch the theatrical cut, um, but now that I've seen that, I'm kind of itching to watch the directorial cut. So I think I'm going to see this again very soon um, because I loved everything about it, to be honest. When it comes to criticisms, I'm going to be extremely nitpicking, like I was actively trying to find things to dislike because I was having such a great time. Um, Foxy Hep. So, Pitch Black, it's taking place in this dystopian future. We don't get a lot of world building, and I actually like that. I don't, I'm not particularly a fan of, uh, kind of like random sci-fi movies that get obsessed with themselves when it comes to world building. For example, like Total Recall. Uh, well, Starship Troopers is kind of an exception because I particularly like that universe, but yeah, there's that's a common trope, but this movie doesn't do that. This movie is very self-contained, not sequel baiting, and um, yeah, just a great time all overall. So basically, we're uh, following this... Moxie, can you please just relax? You, you can go inside and like, whenever this video is done, so just chill. Come on, have a look, just chill. Okay, if my dog can please stop uh, bothering me. Moxie, come on, how about God, she is being annoying. Uh, okay, usually I would uh, restart my take by now, but you know what? Maybe someone will find that funny. Okay, <clears throat> let's start over again. So, hi, I'm Rainy Nights. I just finished watching Pitch Black. Uh, fun fact, this movie actually came out eight days after I was born. Um, and I watched this as a child, not a baby. Um, but I'm sure baby me was excited when I came out of the womb. I'm sure I was hyped for it. And, um, yeah, it was, a uh, hype well delivered because where do I even begin? This movie is just, honestly, this movie's gonna enter, like, my top ten favorites. And, uh, I'm confident that it's not a whim or anything. It's actually that good. So, let me try and focus up. It's just my dog's being very annoying. So, there is a transport, a space shuttle that is traveling through space. It's got a, uh, lots of cargo. There's one... Uh, escaped convict criminal named Riddick, who is uh, kind of the, not main character, but the, uh, the primary badass, I guess. And we've got some religious people, and we've got some, uh, some merchants, and there's a couple of police people. So it's a very diverse group, which is a good thing. And um, the group is a little bit too big, in my opinion, but we'll talk about that more later. But um, so, they unfortunately crash onto a hostile alien planet that has three suns, and they start looking for water and a means to survive because um, they are uh, basically stranded. That was not part of their route whatsoever, and uh, they don't really know that there's aliens on there with them, but uh, luckily for them, they have a uh, escaped convict that they can team up with. Originally, they are looking for him, but that doesn't last long. Most of the movie, they are cooperating with each other. So Riddick is uh, this murderer with no conscience and no morals, and he completes a character arc by the end of the film, which is a good thing. As well as the pilot lady. The pilot lady also completes an arc by the end of the film. And I love that this movie tackles the grayness of morality and how flexible morality can be, especially in self-preservation situations, so that was pretty cool. Um, and yeah, so they're fighting these creatures that are, uh, they can own, the creatures can only exist in the dark. So, and since the planet has three suns, it takes particularly long for nightfall to come, and it will take particularly long for the sun to come up again. Uh, so they have a very long, eternal-feeling night ahead of them, and they have to try and get the fusion cells to their ship so that they can power up and leave the, uh, the rock, as they keep calling it. And luckily, uh, Vin Diesel's character, Riddick, he, I, I, I always thought he was blind as a child, but that is not the case. It's actually exactly the opposite. Um, he got, he has surgically enhanced eyes that give him night vision. Uh, so he's able to scout uh, forwards for the group, and he is definitely one of the biggest assets of that group, if not the biggest. So, yeah, and there's also, you know, there's a lot of characters in this with, with their own little motives, and ultimately they just all want to survive, right? So if we start off with the cons, it's a very, very short list. First of all, I did like the little child character that was like a wannabe Riddick. They're basically cosplaying as Riddick. But I didn't understand the whole uh, gender reveal thing. So you might consider that a spoiler. To me, it's not a huge deal. But uh, the kid that was pretend pretending to be Riddick was uh, 
not a boy, actually, they were just a, a bald uh, girl, but like, I didn't really get why. And I think it's implied to us that they get one of their first periods or something, and then that the blood attracts the creatures to their location, but like, yeah, well, that makes sense. I just didn't get why there was like such a big deal about covering her gender. Like, I, I just like, if it was because she was worried about being a liability, well, you're a child, so you're, you're a liability one way or the other. It doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, I didn't really get that. It would have been nice if they maybe honed in on that. Maybe in the director's cut, there's a little bit more stuff there. Um, but I did like that character still. I just want to mention that, like, they made such a big deal about the gender reveal, and it's like, uh, why? Um, but that's okay. Um, also, I'd say the group is too big for its own good. However, that also plays to its strengths because it gives us, like, every single death in this is very graphic and brutal and rewarding. Like, these are good deaths, and, uh, you have more people in the film than more bodies to add to the body count, right, and the death toll. So it's kind of a double-edged thing there. Yeah, you've got a bunch of disposable characters we don't care about, but on the other hand, it means more, more awesome kills with the great practical effects. Um, and um, is there anything else, or is that it? I felt like I had one more, but... On, oh yeah, also, uh, the while it is a stylistic choice, I, uh, I'm not sure if I'm a huge fan of the uh, blue light filter that was uh, played at the start of the film. Uh, so like the first third of the movie, has this blue filter applied to it, and um, I don't hate it, I just want to mention that it is kind of distracting, and I prefer the rest, the other two-thirds of the movie that are doesn't have a blue light effect on it. Uh, particularly when the actual pitch black stuff happens, that's when the movie is uh, most effective, and I just love, I have a 4K copy of this, the colors are popping so well, there are flares in the dark, tensions are always high, the group drama is always high. It's another positive of having a very diverse and large group of people with different backgrounds and opinions. There's plenty of, you know, infighting and arguing, arguing with each other. And they're all kind of understandable in their own ways because while I'm not like a, I don't believe in God myself, I can understand him looking to his God for faith in this horrible situation he's found himself in. And then there's people like Riddick who are just, you know, self-survival, doesn't owe anyone anything, but then can eventually choose to help people. So there's a lot, there's a very diverse group, and even though they are technically bare bones characters, I kind of like them. I like the pilot. I like the uh, morphine addict guy. Um, the child is good, and um, even the holy man. I, I mean, I respected the holy man. I felt like they're all pretty good. The uh, scientist guy, or no, not the scientist. The the nerdy looking merchant guy of antiques. He was uh, you knew he was gonna die, and it was very satisfying when he did. So. I, I kind of like this cast. And I love that, like, the pilot girl actually goes through, like, a full arc, too. You don't see that a lot, where uh, more than one character completes an arc in a survival scenario, you know, sci-fi horror movie like this. I haven't seen that a lot. So, honestly, Pitch Black, is it objectively perfect? No, probably not. But I'm still going to give it a 10 out of 10, because it blew all my expectations out of the water. Um, it's, it holds up really, really well. I went into this, like, here's my, my mindset going into this was, okay, this is a nostalgic childhood favorite of mine. I know you're not supposed to watch this as a child, but who listens to that? Um, this is a nostalgic childhood favorite of mine. I'm probably having rose-tinted glasses, and uh, it's probably not going to be as good as I remember. I mean, more than half of my childhood favorites have been that experience, but that's not the case with this. I appreciate it so much more now that I'm an adult. Um, the creatures are very intimidating. You usually don't have CGI swarms of creatures be kind of scary. They're usually just kind of like throwaway things. Um, Starship Troopers is actually another example where they are scary. Well, maybe not scary, but intimidating. So, these, I like these night creatures. I like the planet. The sets are great. The budget's high. Acting's good. Uh, characters, yes, there's a lot of them, but they do focus on the ones that matter the most. And ultimately, I did care about them, so... I was very invested in this movie start to finish. I think the visuals are great, the action is great. Love how visceral and bloody it is. And I love that some character arcs and some messages are present. So, 10 out of 10 for Pitch Black. I think this one has a 54 out of 100 on Metacritic. I don't claim to uh, copy other critics, so in my opinion, that's way too low. I think this is an underrated movie. I'm sure most people like it, but I guess critics didn't like it. Fair enough, but yeah, I, this is infinitely rewatchable. I'm gonna see this so many times. It's just so fast-paced and fun, so, yeah, I recommend Pitch Black with Vin Diesel. You have to see it. 
one of the best sci-fi movies I've ever seen for sure.